All right. So this video is going to cover the basics of Grasshopper, just how to use it, launch it, and start programming in it. Now, once you've installed Grasshopper, you won't find a button for Grasshopper in your Rhino. What you have to do instead is go to your command line and type in Grasshopper, and it will autocomplete. Just hit enter. Here we go. Now, for the beginning, I'm going to maximize this window, and later on, we'll probably have Rhino and our Grasshopper side by side. Now, all these different boxes are previously open files. Don't let them confuse you for now. What we're going to concentrate on is how to create the simplest of programs. Now, Grasshopper consists of a canvas in which we arrange blocks and then we connect the in and outputs of these blocks to create a program. So instead of typing code, we connect these different functional blocks. And these blocks can be very different things. Things which you'll be very familiar with from uh, CAD tools, for example. You get things like, here we go, you can do, 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 divide curves, right, for example. Or you can create different circles, arcs, polygons, rectangles. We can also go into surfaces, so you can create a plane or a box, a cylinder, a sphere. And you've got things such as translations, so scaling or here we go, we've got arrays, Euclidean transformations like mirrors, moves, rotations. And you've also got things to control how your objects which you program in Grasshopper are visualized in Rhino. And we'll get into all of this later. And we'll also get into this long list of plugins, which you probably won't have yet. These are editions, usually or quite often they're, they're free, open source. And they extend the, the capabilities of Grasshopper, for example. Firefly lets you connect things like Arduinos or Connects. And of course, Kuka PSC lets us program robots. But let's get back to the basics. Let's have a look at one of these components. And I'm just going to do some basic math. So I'm going to simply multiply two numbers. So up here, we've got a multiplication block. And if you drag it down here, this is what it looks like. Now each block, we usually have inputs and an output or multiple outputs. If you hover over the block, it'll tell you what kind of block it is. This is a multiplication block. It uh, multiplies two numbers. And right now it is yellow because it's got a warning. So if you go over this little warning tag, it will say, hey, this is my problem. And right now, I don't have an input parameter A, I don't have an input parameter B. So of course I can't multiply things. So let's create some input here. And I'm going to go back to this params. Now the par parameter blocks, they can contain geometry or things such as numbers, or they can be actual input devices. So what I can do is I can drag a number here and then set a number with this. Or, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a number slider. Here we go. So I'm going to delete that, just hit the delete button. So now I've got a slider, and I'm going to need two of these. So I could just copy this one, right, uh, with Control c and then V. Or, what I can also do if I want to add a block is simply double-click, and this will open a search bar and there I can type in slider and there we go number slider okay so now I've got two numbers both are 0 0.25 now let us connect them to the inputs and this you do by going to the little bubbles and then dragging them to connect them haha and the warning goes away because it's got two inputs only problem is we can't see the actual output. And this is where one of the most used blocks in Grasshopper will come into play, the panel, which is a squiggly thing up here. But I'm going to go panel, enter, 
zoom out a little bit. And you can see how you can simply drag around and select. It's the same as with the rest of CAD. You know, the drag in this direction it only selects what's inside the box, other direction, everything. But let's connect these two bubbles and now we can see the output. So if we multiply 0 0.25 with 0 0.25, we get 0 0.0625. And here's where Grasshopper gets interesting. If you change these values, it will automatically recalculate the entire code. And this can be really, really long and then it will take some time. But generally speaking, the, the data, the, the numbers, the geometry flows from the left-hand side to the right-hand side through all these connections and blocks. Now let's say we don't want to multiply these two numbers, but I'm going to add another number slider. Here we go, slider. And this time I'm going to use with whole numbers. So this has got this floating point from 0 to 1. And let's say I want to have the numbers from 2 to 7 in whole numbers. In that case, you double click on it, and now you can select if it's supposed to be real numbers, so with a comma, or integer numbers, or equal, even numbers, or odd numbers. So let's go to integer numbers and set the minimum double click to click the green thing, double click 7, click the green thing. There we go. And we can even give it a name so that we can find it later or understand more easily what it means. But we'll get into all of that later. For now, we've now created a slider with the number 2. Now, if we then drag this onto the B input, it'll replace the input of this slider. That's one way to replace the input, but sometimes you want to do it differently. Sometimes you don't want to um, replace something, you just want to remove some an input. So I'm going to show you how to you can remove inputs. The one way is to drag backwards and hit control and then the little icon at your cursor turns red and then it will be disconnected. Or you can right click, hang on, right click on the input and then it's going to be disconnect and it will highlight for you which item is going to disconnect. So if you have multiple things connected, that's what happens. All right, so I'm going to just reconnect these and show you one more thing, namely if we, for example, copy this item, I can, for example, have now one slider, one multiplication, sorry, which is connected to these two, and one which is connected to these two. Right, so I can use data multiple times. And now if I want to show this, I can connect it to this panel. And that, of course, replaces it. What I can also do is, once I have this connected, and I connect the second one, I hit the Shift button. Hang on, here we go. Shift, and there we go. And now we've, got, we've merged these two data channels of these two multiplications into one panel and then it will show us both of them at the same time. Now that's all probably relatively boring to you because it's just multiplying two numbers. So let's get rid of all that junk and have a look at something more interesting. Now for that I'm going to put the Rhino and the Grasshopper side by side. Now let's say we want to do something with this box which we created in Rhino. Now, the first thing I need to do is somehow get this box from Rhino into Grasshopper. And to do that, you can use these geometry things. So see here, we've got the geometry box. We've also got a general geometry item somewhere here. Where is it? Mesh, circle. I usually don't use these icons. I usually just type in geometry and then I get a geometry item. But we know this is going to be a box, so let's use the, the box block. And it will complain that uh, it fails to collect data because it doesn't have a box assigned to it. So how do we do that? Well, we select our grasshopper, uh, our rhino geometry, and then right click on this and go set one box. And you can already see that we can set multiple boxes or even manage an existing collection of boxes which we've assigned into this parameter. 
So now it should actually there we go. Set one box. Oh, it doesn't like it. Being bad grasshopper. The thing is that this is probably not a box the way that grasshopper supposes boxes work. So we're just going to use the more general geometry class. So now we can put any kind of geometry in here. There we go. And now something weird has happened. We've got an overlay here. For one, we see the in grey, we see the rendering of the box in Rhino, and in red, the box created by Grasshopper. And you can, when you select something in Grasshopper, it'll show you what's been selected in Rhino. So let's do some simple transformations here. Let's move this box. Now we can see that the move has got two inputs and two outputs, and you can usually guess by the letter what it wants, like G for geometry maybe, exactly, but as you can see, if you hover over that input, it will tell you what it actually wants, and you can see it wants some form of geometry. Now it's already moved something up there, and this is because the second thing, the motion, the translation vector, so we need to give it a vector which translate it, has got a default setting. If you hover over it, you can see down there in the yellow box that it's got a 0, 0, 010, so that means it's going to move it 10 units in the Z direction. Now, let's say we want to move it 20 units in the Y direction. Now, how do we do that? Well, for one, we need to give it 20, which is the, the distance, and we also need to give it a direction. So X, right? And for this, Rhino gives you all those nice basis vectors. So X, Y, and Z, you can just tip X and you'll get unit X. And if you remember from math in high school, you'll recall that, let's hover over this, that a unit vector has got a length of one. So this has got one, zero, zero as a vector. Now, if we put that in here as a direction, you'll see that it moves it one millimeter in x direction. But if we want to move it 20, we're going to have to scale that up. And see how the x unit vector has got an input, a factor, and it says unit multiplication? Well, what we can now do is add a number to in here, and it will multiply that vector by that number. So let's do that here. Dragging around is the same as in Rhino. You'd use a right click. And we're going to use another slider. There we go. And double click natural numbers. Let's put a max at the wonderful number 42. Here we go. And now we can move that geometry with this slider. That's the basics of Grasshopper, so now you know how to connect the blocks, what a block roughly is, how to access information of what the block is wanting by hovering over it, how you can understand what is wrong when there's a yellow box, you go over that little warning thing, how to configure a slider with a maximum or minimum if you want whole numbers or not, how to get geometry into Grasshopper, and then how to start mucking about with it. Thank you for watching.